Welcome back to Exchange Street Capital. Unfortunately for you, I am your host, Rick Allenbach. Based on today's video title, I know what you're thinking. Why is this asshole not wearing quarter zips? He looks dumber in vests than he does in quarter zips. Quick answer, I don't do laundry during COVID. All seriousness, seriousness pardon me, uh, today is how to play, in quotes, your 401k. The reason I have that is because this is, we're not playing. This is a serious, serious exercise in, in terms of all we do in investing, especially for retirement. And the way I set it up for you and explain it, there is no play. It's not a game. People talk to me about all the time about when I play the market. It's like gambling. It absolutely is not. Uh, it's like gambling if you're playing Texas Hold'em with nine other people at the table and uh, you can identify nine donkeys. That's then, it, then yeah, then it's playing. But if it's done right, uh, the outcome will be academic. 100 plus years of a 12% rate of return uh, is not gambling. It just simply isn't. It's probability and timing. So, how to play your 401k. A lot of people have asked me uh, lately, based on the pandemic, should we be lowering our 401k? Should we be moving our 401k to cash? Should we, what, how do, can I get it out? What, all these things. The answer to that is absolutely, unequivocally, no. First, you don't want to move it to cash. Regardless if you're retiring next year or 30 years from now, you don't want to lower your contribution. That doesn't make any sense. We're dollar cost averaging into the market. So we're buying cheaper now. If anything, up your, up your contribution. Um, never, 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 never take it out. There are provisions, and I, I have to say, outside of options, I know more about retirement plans probably than I know about anything. There are provisions such as a loan provision or a hardship provision. Never even look at them unless they're absolutely fundamentally necessary. Because I will tell you, it's not just compounded one for one in terms of how it hurts you. It's actually tenfold. So don't do anything in terms of moving or lowering or altering your 401k uh, based on what's, what's been going on. So, uh, a couple of things before we get started. 2020, the employee contribution limit is now 19500 That's traditional or Roth IRAs, and we're going to talk about that. It's important to understand when Roth is a component within a 401k. 401k really is just a line on a tax code that allows employees of a said company to defer money out of their paycheck pre-tax and save it. Uh, it's just the same as an ERISA 403B or a non-ERISA 403B for a not-for-profit would allow you to do that. So profit sharing plans uh, are somewhat different. It's interesting. All 401ks are profit sharing plans. All profit sharing plans are not 401ks. Someday we may get into that. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just trying to explain to you how smart I really am. That's a joke. So you can put this year $19,500 in your own plan of your money. If you're 50 or older, there's a catch-up provision. They want The government doesn't want a, a generation of retirees with no money. It's going to be not fun. And Social Security continues to, to you know, shrink. Um, so you can catch up an additional $6,500 in a regular 401k or if you have a Roth component. If this does not include any match, QNEC, profit sharing contribution, other safe harbor contribution, anything the employer puts in. The employer can contribute in addition to what you've put in. So the total, the total you can have in there if you're under 50 is $57,000 a year. The 19.5 that you put in and the difference that the employer puts in. If you're 50 or older, the, 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 the max you can put in is 
thousand five hundred dollars. Ton of money, right? But those are just know these because they're important to know. And I'm not going to talk about ADP plans and 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 or, or I'm sorry, ADP tests and um, highly compensated employees, not highly compensated. If you have a corrective distribution, I'm not going to get into all those into why. For ninety percent of the general public, this is important, and this and you'll be okay with knowing this. 98%, I should say. So, when I was growing up and young and administering 401k plans and explaining them and giving advice to folks, and the way I learned it, and the way it's still taught today, the traditional 401k plan, someone's 30 years old, they make $100,000. These are absolutely arbitrary and basically simple for math. That's why I did it. Age, age 30 person, salary is $100,000. They're contributing 17.5%. Why? Well, you say, well, this year, Rick, it's 19.5. I'm, I'm trying to show you how to max out. Well, because the average in terms of people that max out for, for whatever reason, it was based like six months ago, but it was actually under 19, which was last year. But we're just going to say 17.5%. I could easily have made that 19.5. It's 17.5%. The expected increase is 3%. Because, by the way, this number goes up every year. Every year it's going to go up for inflation. Um, the employer match is 50% up to 6. So, half of, your, of what you're putting in up to 6. If you put in 6, you get 3%. If you put in 4, you get 2%. If you put in 17.5%, you get 3%. Okay? So your current balance is 100000 This person's been saving. You're going to retire at 65. Okay, let's see what that looks like. 35 years of deferred savings, compounded interest, Cap, compounding capital gains and returns, you will have at 65 years of age five five point five million dollars. Out of that, you would have contributed seven hundred thousand five hundred dollars, and the employer would have contributed in just a match. Now, I'm not even getting into the other stuff they might give you. One hundred eighty-six thousand and change. In addition, because it's deferred from tax. It's not tax free, it's deferred from tax. Your hundred grand this year, you're only taxed on eighty two thousand five hundred. That seventeen thousand five hundred goes in before tax, so you're saving that money. So so really it's eighty two cents on the dollar for every dollar you're putting into the 401k. Every dollar you put in only costs you eighty two cents. That's a good deal, right? So it continues to grow. So this is a nice little chunk of change for you to retire. The old way, we would say, okay, live on five percent of this, because if we're going to say, oh, by the way, I didn't. What I didn't put on here is the return, the average return. Sorry, and I'm being conservative. Is eight percent. I know we can do better than that, but we're going to say eight percent. So we I, we would say live on five percent. So on this, let's just let's just call it three hundred grand. Okay, and you, you'll you'll never run out of money because if we're if we're gaining eight even after retirement, um, you'll never run out of money, and you'll 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 be able to uh, will that money to your kids to your whatever philanthropic needs you want, whoever you want to do do that to, right? So the only money that gets taxed is this 300 grand. Now, today this looks attractive. The tax brackets are extremely low. 35% is the highest bracket right now, essentially. I mean, let's just play it easy here. Um, so it, this whole thing, tied up in a bow, looks great. Okay. But 30, a 30-year-old... In 35 years, do we think we're going to be in the low tax? So what don't we know? Well, we pretty much know that we can get this. Even in a 20-year even bear market, which 
is, by the way, the average bear market lasts, I think, 17 months at the most, um, and a negative 22%. The average bull market lasts way longer than that. American Funds came out with a nice, nice little piece that I should have had. I should have should have had ready. My point is, all this we know. What don't we know? We don't know this. There have been times where the tax rate's been 90%. So all this time, that money's been locked up. You cannot use it. But it looks great. You look at your quarterly reports. And let me tell you, when ERISA came on board in 72, and mutual funds, mutual funds started to, to get hot in the early 80s, 401ks were what they were. But when you had 408B2, 404C, fiduciary responsibility, these, these plans are good. They're good. They've got good funds. They've, the fees are in line. Every, everybody's doing the right thing right now. So you're going you're gonna to have great funds. You're going to have a, a, a good chance at low cost because of, because of you're getting economies of scale. All that we know. We just don't know what tax you're going to pay. Well, that's a huge thing. It's a huge issue. Okay? Um, but I would bet anybody that we're going to be higher than we are now. And not just because of this year or the pandemic or anything, but based on probabilities. So why? And oh, by the way, you can't use any of this money all that time. Well, it's for retirement. I get that. I understand. That's fully understandable. But to get, so, so now we get to use this or whatever you want to use. But you start using more and we go in a 10-year bull bear market uh, people do run out. So that is interesting. And, and to, to what I will say today is I would never preach this today. If you're doing it and it works for you, keep it up. I'm not you. But I want to explain to you that this is, the, these are the, well, let's put it this way. This is the scariest word in the English dictionary, okay? Next to death. But you're not paying this after, after we pass. So I'm not saying it's going to be this, but it's been as high as this. So somewhere in between. So if we make a change and we say, because now a lot of plants have a Roth component. Not a Roth IRA. Roth IRAs are great if, you, if you're able to do them, awesome. The problem with Roths are, uh, once you make a certain amount of money, you no longer can make them. A Roth says that um, this goes away. You no longer get, you no longer get a, a tax break when you contribute. Um, so that, you know, what you're... Accountant's like, oh, look at this, you're deferring and you only paid that, so here's your refund, great. But here's what you do get. So if you put in 100, so if you make 100K, you're taxed at 100K, at least based on, on your contributions. Everything else stays the same. However, now it grows tax-free. Now we're talking. Now, it doesn't matter if taxes are at 90%. This Roth is protected by the government. And let me tell you, if they evoke this and start taxing the Roth, they're going to be taxing, imagine what the tax rates would be then, 99%. They'd be tax, taxing uh, cash values and life insurance. So just, they can't do those things. They, they fundamentally, you know, it won't happen, cannot happen, would not happen. This is not my opinion. It physically cannot happen. If, they, if the government needs that kind of income, we're in way worse shape than you worrying about your retirement. So the beautiful thing is, it doesn't matter, make this 99. You don't care. Your 5.5 is nice. It's sitting pretty. It's tax free. Take out as much as you want, when you want. So that's the beautiful thing. So my point is, my plan has a Roth option. If your plan doesn't, whether you're a business owner, a highly compensated employee, a non-highly compensated employee, Talk to your plan administrator, okay? 401ks are built for the betterment of the masses, not for the owners. So talk to them about adding a Roth component. Hey, there's no problem with it. It's fiduciary uh, positive. 
Um, and it's a, it, it doesn't mean you can't still have a traditional. You can mix and match and do both. Don't move your traditional stuff over to the Roth. Keep what you got, but build on it. Your plan probably does have a Roth component. You just don't know if it doesn't ask about it. I would, I'm putting 100% of my contributions every day now in Roth. I'm 43, and I guarantee taxes are going up, so I want a tax-free component. Okay? So that's important. Now we're going to talk about the way I would do it, my way. And it's funny, 15 years ago, I would have thought this was insane. But times change. So my way, a 30-year-old who makes 100K, it's going to sound like a broken record, contributes 6%. The increase is zero. Employer match is still 50% up to 6. Our current balance is 100K. Retirement age is 65. But it's never. Because if, you li if you're listening, and by the way, we're at a half a million views in two months, and I appreciate that. If you're listening to me, entrepreneur, we don't quit. We don't retire. You might do something else, but the point is we're going to say 65. Now, theoretically, I could have, I made this so simple because I, I just wanted to be, wanted to get my message across. But you're saying, well, why, why, Rick, aren't, if this is 186000 on on employer match, well, why is employer match here, contribution only 105? You're right. I, sh I should have staggered the graphs so they're both the same and increased this a little. But I just wanted to show that we, now you, you've put in 210000 and the employer has put in 105. Now, we always want to max out what the employer is giving us. So this is for in illust illustrative purposes only, but you can see what I did here. I wanted to contribute the top of the match. If this was 8, I would have done 8. If it was 2, I would have done 2. I want to get the max. I want to take their money. It's free money. Okay? But I wanted to show that the fact that, okay, we only put in 210, and here you put in 700. They only put in 105 for us, here they put in 186. And yet, 5.5, 3.1. You're saying, Rick, three, what the, what you, that's almost double. Okay, you're right. You're, you know, you, you've got a bunch more here. You only got 3.1. Obviously, this would be in, in the Roth. I would, my way would be Roth which you should have right now, and you probably do if you don't ask about it again. But look at the difference. $490,000 of taxable money I didn't have locked up for 35 years. Give me, fit, give me a half a million dollars spread out so that I can de dollar cost average into multiple investments. Let me tell you, that's a powerful weapon. So use it. And these are, I made, it, I, I made these up 10 minutes before I started here, but I'm telling you, it, they're life changers. You can buy municipal bonds, so that, that's tax-free income, and what it is, is it, di it differentiates you away from a 401k, the stock market, it's not locked up. Stocks with dividends, investment properties that give passive income, it, again, correlation to the S&P 500, zero, outside business ventures. Whether that's loaning money to, you know, be careful here, but loaning money to friends who, so you get bond dividend, or investing in your own side businesses. I mean, there's four ways to get rich in this country, right? Inherit the money, start your own small business, own real estate, or stock market speculation, or I don't like to call it speculation, but that's what they call it. Those are the four ways. So here I'm hitting them. Small business. Investment properties is owning land, stock speculation, um, and we're not hitting inheritance. The, the hell with that. But my, my, but my point is we're going to do it on our own. Our kids can worry about all inheriting whatever we had to do. But at the end, freedom. We're free. You're free at least a half a million dollars through this time where you, you don't have to worry about it getting locked up. You don't have to say, oh... There was that opportunity that I needed 50 grand, and uh, we could have gotten in on a property or a, 
idea or anything. Or hey, you, you want a house in Florida when you're 50. Well, I guess we could take a home equity loan. Why? You know, for the down money. You got a hundred grand sitting sitting there. So, you know, and again, this is what we're being conservative. We're ba we're going based on apples to apples. This, it's not like this is eight hundred grand. This is three million bucks that the four hundred one k gave you. You're gonna tell me that stock, like that that the stocks I pick with dividends, investment property, outside businesses, muni bonds that pay tax free dividends. And financial freedom completely isn't going to make up for this other two million bucks. You be the judge, but I'm telling you that's my way. That's my way. That's what I would do. That's what I'm telling you to do. I'm also not, I'm going to say if it doesn't feel right, do what you're doing. At least I've given you an understanding of what the heck all this stuff it means. The Roth component I cannot stress enough. Because what it does is if you want to max out and you don't say, Rick, I don't want to, I don't like investment properties. They're not for everybody. I don't, I don't want to start an outside business. Not for everybody. I don't need stocks with dividends. We have stocks in our 401k. Well, stick to mutual funds in your 401k, but that's, that's, a, that's another story. And muni bonds, I'm, I'm not in that bracket. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, that's fine. But at least let's take the tax out of it. Okay, so now we, we now we have known. We we now we know we have knowns. Plus these this you never know, these mini bond dividends may pay for your health care. That's another big thing we don't know about in the next twenty to thirty years. So you can tell I'm a little bit of passion about it. Hey, the important thing is saving, right? If you're if you're doing any of this, you're ahead of I'd say seventy five percent of the country. So save like hell. This is my way. This might be your way, and it's still good. Um, I'm proud of you for continuing to listen. We're going to keep on rolling. Uh, if I say anything you like, if you like the vest or the quarter zip, you know, whatever it takes uh, to get views, uh, you know, like and subscribe. If you don't like it, hey, tell me that too. I like, I like, I like seeing that. Um, and that's all I got for you, and we'll see you next week.